So in this chapter, we have already talked about the girl, Ma'am Loisa, Loisa. She is uh, the kind of woman who seeks happiness in materialistic things. She doesn't realize that uh, uh, her real, uh, you know, wealth is the love she gets from her husband and the family or the house where she lives in, where she's got everything actually, which is required to be happy. So she seeks happiness in something which she doesn't have. So she's not able to ever count on her blessings. Her husband, on the other hand, is the kind of person who is exactly the opposite to what she is. So she, he knows that he is a blessed man with a lovely wife and with a nice home where he comes and have fun. So this, uh, this woman, you know, it is said, the writer feels that she was born in a family of clerks by mistake. Why by mistake? Hmm? Why does the writer say that he's, she's born by mistake in a family of clerks? Yeah, because she thought that she was meant for rich class. She thought like this. So it was she who whose attitude, whose outlook towards life was such that she would have been born in a, in a rich family. But one thing is there, had she been there in a rich family, would she have been happier? Tell me. If Ma'am Loisel been there in a rich family, do you think she would have been very happy then? No. She might have even craved for more than what was with her because there is never a limit. There is never ever a limit. Yes, you go to that side, section. So when you have something, you always want more. So there is never ever an end to one's desire. So if this woman, you know, had been there in a very rich family, even then she would have been craving for more and more and more. And in the end, she realizes that she is actually very blessed. Then she has had not become rich. The moment she is able to realize that she is rich, uh, sorry, that she is very happy, that she should count on her blessings. At that time, she had not become rich. But yes, she had been enlightened. It was the enlightenment which made her feel that she was happy. So happiness doesn't depend upon what we have. Happiness depends upon what we think we have. And we have almost everything in life. Okay, the moment we start like uh, valuing what we have, that very minute we become the happiest soul on this earth. And materialism has nothing to do with one's happiness. That is for sure. Otherwise, uh, when you people, when we start seeking happiness in materialism, we start becoming obsessed. And obsession is the key to become unhappy. Okay, obsession is the key to be the, to be uh, alienated from this world. Okay, let's see what the, what happens to this woman. So we had read out like her husband brings one invitation uh, for a ball that is for a dance party. And it was a very VIP invitation. And the moment she finds this invitation in her hand, she becomes all the more unhappy. The reason being that uh, it's not that she doesn't find, uh, she doesn't feel happy at getting that kind of invitation, which was a uh, uh, which only very privileged people are able to get. That very minute she becomes unhappy uh, because she thinks that she would not be able to go there because she doesn't have this or that. Though her husband told her that she had uh, very suitable dresses for the party, for jewelry also he suggested her something very nice, but she was not the one who would be satisfied very easily. So number one, she wanted a beautiful dress and for that her husband got ready to part with his uh, amount which he had saved, which he had been saving for the last, uh, a lot of last much time, so that he was able to uh, buy something. Uh, uh, huh? uh, so he wanted to buy something for himself for the last so much of time. But the minute he saw that his wife wanted that money, he got ready to part with that money in without thinking twice. So 
that could have been made for his wife you know realize that she was very lucky the one who had got such kind of loving husband okay so when the, you get somebody in your life the one who loves you cares for you is ready to sacrifice each and everything for you i guess we must be considering ourselves luckiest and you people have got your parents for for all the, those things right so she would have she was lucky but she never ever felt that she was very lucky so her husband uh, fulfilled her one desire thereby giving her the money to buy one gown she was able to get one dress but the now her concern was like what would she have to adorn herself that is a jewelry so her husband suggested her that she could go for flowers she would have she would have looked like stunning in uh, natural flowers but that she did not want to go for because that would have made her look pathetic or poverty stricken in the party where the rich women might have come so this is what so what are you able to relate this thing with the society also yes in this society what happens people uh, sometimes people don't mind what they don't have but they start minding what they don't have because of the because of the societal state, uh, status or pressure okay it's fine with some people if they don't go out but the moment they would see somebody else putting status of uh, outings they would start pressurizing their own families like they are going there why are we not going there so even when there is no need we people start going in for yes social pressure okay it is a social pressure which makes us more unhappy than actually we are what we are so this is the story is very relevant with this kind of uh, you know society where we people are living okay it's not only madam loisel it's not only uh, one woman it's each woman it's each child okay almost all people those who are in this kind of society right <clears throat> okay so let's see uh, i am starting from page number 40 40 40 okay 42 <clears throat> okay so she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced her with passion then went away with her treasure so she had reached her friend what was the name of her friend madam frostier so madam frostier she approached her friend for jewelry and her friend uh, you know showed her all kinds of jewelry and uh, she was not able to like any one of them and she kept on asking for more and more so finally her friend showed her one uh, set of diamonds and that she really liked a lot and her friend allowed her to go with that diamond necklace so she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced her with passion then went away with her treasure so what was the treasure she got that set of diamond necklace which which was her treasure now why has the writer called it as a treasure what is treasure something very precious and something which is in bulk okay something which adds value something something whose value is a lot something which is very very valuable so how was this necklace a treasure for her in the end there will be a twist we all people know that twist that this necklace it turns out to be a fake one okay right now she doesn't know that this necklace is fake so she has been enamored by its glitter and she doesn't know that all that glitters is not always gold she doesn't know that we should not judge a book by its cover she should have asked her friend whether it was real diamonds or not that her that judgment her that you know uh, sensitivity towards uh, the analysis would have made her life quite easier even in future but she did not even realize that something could have been fake also uh, she was actually uh, that kind of you can say uh, insensitive woman that's why she was like this the one who was after diamonds the person who is actually enlightened from within that person knows that uh, the one's worth doesn't lie in carrying valuables one's worth lies in becoming valuable so she was not able to she didn't have that uh, that sense she did not have how would she have been able to make out like this diamond was fake 
so she comes up with that treasure so here treasure calling this necklace as treasure is ironical because this was not treasure this was just a fake necklace whose worth was not not about about 200 francs am i right so it was a very cheap necklace and she will be able to she will ruin her whole life because of this this cheap necklace fake necklace so the writer calls it as a treasure that's that will turn out to be ironical later on okay so i told you like it's a satire upon the women upon the people those who seek happiness in materialism okay so when there is a satire there is criticism irony will be there so there are so many examples of ironical you know touch in the story so here is one example the day of the ball arrived ma'am loisel was a great success she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of joy so why was she smiling today why was she full of joy what made her have all this joy yes just that she was wearing that uh, beautiful dress and that uh, beautiful necklace she was wearing so that gave her happiness so she was such so vanity vain people are like this v a n e vain what is vanity vanity is exactly the opposite to to being wise when one is not wise one is vain and vain people seek happiness in such kind of nonsense things had it been actually a diamond necklace even then her becoming joyous at getting a diamond necklace was still being vain okay it's not that it was a fake necklace that's why we are saying that uh, she is vain uh, because she was happy had it been actually a diamond necklace even then she would have become very happy even then we would have termed her as being vain because we those who seek happiness in materialistic things they are actually vain people so she is such okay so she was very happy gracious elegant all was the uh, all the men noticed her so if she was vain the people around her were equally vain they also noticed because she was wearing a diamond necklace because she was looking good asked her name and wanted to be presented so everybody wanted to be introduced to her this is what the society is about she danced with enthusiasm intoxicated with pleasure thinking of nothing but all this admiration the victory so complete and sweet to her heart so she was also very happy she she was very enthusiastic enthusiastically she kept on dancing with everybody uh, so what made her become enthusiastic admiration she was being praised okay when you like being praised by others for being vain only god can help you then so the so she was so enthusiastic she had been intoxicated with pleasure like she was almost you know as if she was intoxicated now she was not in her on her own now she was uh, like uh, she was as if she was moving on in some world of fantasy got it so she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the little uh, salons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much so here men have not been termed as being very uh, you know vain the way women are and uh, we don't generalize we don't believe in gender bias but uh, here the fact is shown such that the women get more enamored by you know vanity they are more enamored by the uh, show of kinds of life but the men you know they were uh, they were sleeping somewhere in the uh, next rooms and these women they kept on dancing through the night he threw around her shoulders the modest straps they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume so he th threw around her shoulders the modest straps so husband had already uh, uh, had with him some wrap and uh, she covered her shoulders with that modest strap something what is modest something which is not very expensive so it was not a very modest it was not very expensive wrap and he covered her shoulders with that and uh, she found it very uh, she found it exactly in contrast to her expensive dress or the uh, necklace which she was wearing 
so she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs now she didn't want to be seen by other women because now she was having a cheap wrap she didn't want that other women should notice because though other women were wearing expensive wraps okay uh, loisel detained her wait said he i'm going to call a cab but she would not listen and dis uh, descended the steps rapidly when they were in the street they found no carriage and they began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance so they had to wait for, uh, the husband wanted her to stop there and uh, meanwhile he would be calling a cab but the cab could not come instantly so they she descended she came downstairs why was she in such a hurry why couldn't she even wait for the cab to come the point is again uh, she didn't want anyone to notice that she was having a cheap wrap so she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the women okay so they walked around towards the river hopeless and shivering finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall so they walked along towards the river what's the significance of telling us that they did not find the cab for a long time hmm? you have read the story you know the story a little bit you know what will happen after this ball she will lose her necklace so now they are telling us that they did not find the cab for a long time they kept on walking towards the river and then they found one of the old carriages which one can find in after the nightfall so the significance of telling all this is that later on it will become impossible for them to retrace uh, trace back their necklace so had it only been one cab official cab then maybe they might have been able to get their necklace back but they did not get that uh, nice cab okay so now if you go by ola or something then uh, you can trace back something of yours because that is an official website but if you go by just one uh, you know uh, taxi just any 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 if you take the uh, you know lift from any one then you might not get something back if you've lost it what so significance over here is that uh, like first she descended the stairs then afterwards they walked to the streets up till river they kept on walking so if she had uh, lost her necklace somewhere on that way that's why it was almost impossible for her husband to find out that necklace because anyone could pick up that necklace from if it was there on the way had it been the straight way the cab if she had been able to get the way her husband was suggesting her then she would have been able to find her necklace out so her mistakes her mistake is not just one or two she has been committing mistakes after mistakes okay see the kinds of mistakes she is committing and each mistake the reason of each mistake is her vanity she doesn't want to be Uh, want to be seen as a poor woman that's it okay. so he threw around uh, we have done so but she would not listen and all they walked along towards the river hopeless and shivering so she was shivering even then she kept on walking around finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall it took them as far as their as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment it was all over for her it was all over for her again see the vanity so is is your is one party everything for you but it was for her so everything was over for her all her enthusiasm might have gone all her happiness might have gone why why her happiness might have been over because there she was appreciated by so many people there she was showing her necklace to so many people there she was like uh, visible to so many people as being so beautiful woman but here who will see her no one her husband will see her that is not nothing for her her husband told her in the very beginning that uh, you look very lovely to me if you will be dressed up in that uh, dress and if you will wear the flowers i'll i'll really love you when you do like this but that thing didn't matter for her had she been able to give heed to what her husband had been saying then uh, this problem would not have ever occurred so they walked uh, so it took them as far as their door so what took them as far as their door 
that carriage that they came to their that carriage dropped them until their door so they reached their apartment and everything was over for her and on his part he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock and that husband he was very responsible he knew that in the morning he'll have to be at his office at 10 o'clock so she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of her herself in her glory so she wanted to have her glorious view finally so what happened suddenly she uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck so what what does um, uh, this uh, madam loizel do next so what do you think this mr loizel and madam loizel would do this now aditya will tell the answer jayadev hmm. what's my question you tell my question you will be passed my question to become attentive that's why you people have come here now otherwise you could have been sitting in your co cozy quilts sleeping you know okay so what i was talking about harshi no very nice very nice no what question we are asking discussing now i was asking like what will this couple do now what will they do now what will they do now harshdeep they will search they will search for the necklace that's it right now they have found it lost it and now they will search it okay how will they search we can also make it out when we lose something first of all we go then find it out on our own and when we are not able to find it out then we lodge complaint with the class in charge and we go to principal finally parents also come <laughs> and so they, they will also do something like this first mr loizel will go then he'll come back then they might go to police they might lodge an fir let's see so how do they replace the necklace so if they will not be able to find out the necklace what will they do they'll try to what do you think they should do now they've not lost the necklace okay what should they do yeah. ha huh. they should go to madam frostier and they should tell the reality that they have lost the necklace and madam frostier might have told them like never mind it was only very uh, for 200 francs and at the maximum you can uh, give me 200 francs that's it and that would not have uh, you know been very difficult for them but they will not go to her they will not tell her the truth so the truth will also remain hidden from them okay loizel already half undressed asked what's the matter she had turned towards him excitedly i have no longer i have madam frostier's necklace so she now she is realizing that it was madam frostier's necklace had she been able to remember that the necklace was not hers she would have been able to seek happiness on her own earlier her necklace was a treasure for her and now when it is lost then she is able to make out like it's not hers it is somebody else's what's the significance what do we learn from this thing no that's okay but uh, now uh, my point is like now she is realizing that it is hers it is frostier's necklace not hers so happiness in which something in which she was seeking happiness was a baseless reason to try to find happiness in something which is yours not just happiness many a times we say i am very upset what makes us upset somebody said something to me i am very happy somebody said something to me why the key to our happiness or of sadness is in the hands of others let us hold the key of our own happiness in our hands okay so she didn't have the key to her happiness in her hand it was in the hands of somebody else okay so and they looked in the folds of the dress in the folds of the clock in the pockets everywhere they could not find it so first of all they searched there and then like whatever the folds of the dress and all 
He asked, are you sure you still had it when we left the minister's house? Yes, I felt it as we came out. So she had been feeling the necklace. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. It must be the cab. So her husband's point is that if, he, if she had lost it in the street, that they might have heard it falling. Is it always possible? Maybe or may not be. So yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? No. And you? Did you notice what it was? No. So they looked at each other, utterly cast down. Finally, finally, Loisel dressed himself again. I'm going, he said, over the track where we went on foot to see if I can find it. And he went, he, she remained in her evening gown, not having the force to go to bed. Towards seven o'clock, her husband returned. He had found nothing. So at seven o'clock in the morning, he came back announcing that he had not found it out. Right? Okay. He went to the police and to the cab officers and put an advertisement in the newspapers offering a reward. So the husband did her did his best. He went to the police station, filed an FIR and all. He even went to the cab offices and there also he lodged the complaint, but he did not get any suitable response. She wanted all. Uh, she waited all day in a state of bewilderment before this frightful disaster. Loisel returned in the evening. His face pale. He had discovered nothing. So what was the frightful disaster? That nothing had been found out. No information. Yes, last benches. So what I'm talking about? Saharsh, what I'm talking about? Okay, we are talking about necklace. Very good answer. I'm proud of you. So uh, in the necklace, I was telling you that uh, by the when he came back in the evening and announced that he had not been able to trace the necklace back so she was she kept on like uh, waiting for him and finally she was broken he said write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have it repaired that will give us time so her husband suggested her to write to her friend that she had broken the clasp of the necklace and meanwhile they would get some time to find it out she wrote as he dictated. At the end of the week, they had lost all hope. And Loisel, older by five years, declared we must replace this jewel. So within one week, Miss Loisel, the one who was uh, very beautiful, very elegant, she became five years older within one week. So what? Why? Why does it? Why did it happen? Contentment, peace keeps you younger. Worry, it makes you old tension stress worry so what kind of tension she had uh, her tension was that she would not be able to give back the necklace to her friend she had the tension of losing confidence of her friend that's the main thing okay So in a shop of the uh, palace royal, they found a, a chaplet of diamonds, which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost. It was valued at 40,000 francs. They could get it for 36,000. So finally, they went to one jewel shop and there they got the same kind of necklace and uh, the necklace would cost them how much? 40,000 francs. And they were able to buy it for 36,000. Why were they given this much of discount? Hmm? Any idea? Hmm? Okay, discounts go on. And do you think those discounts are uh, are really of value? Those discounts are really discounted discounts? No. Okay, so there is also a question on. There is also a question on. Yes. Again, the uh, you know a comment upon vanity of people. Many women go in for uh, you know shopping on the pretext of sales winter sale or summer sale but hardly it is actually a discount there is hardly a discount but women you know they keep on getting the food do you agree or not no okay you might not agree 
okay don't tell me ki ma'am it happens yeah it might be happening also the things are not always 100% as such so when ma'am loiser took back the jewels to ma'am frostier the letter said to her in a frigid tone you should have returned them to me sooner for i might have needed them so what was madam frostier's reaction when she went to return her the necklace what was her reaction you tell keep setting an answer hanji what's your name sakshan okay so yes khushi so what do you gather from this okay we'll discuss this find out like what does it uh, imply okay 